So I guess we can uh, then uh, start with uh, today's presentation. So uh, today we're going to be uh, speaking about uh, migration to horns. So we're going to uh, basically divide this topic into two major topics. Uh, first, we're going to be speaking how to um, do this hybrid model between uh, the use of uh, previous sectors and horns. We will present a few use cases or typical, let's say, scenarios of deployment where you can see uh, how the horns will benefit your actual deployment. Uh, and then we will also, of course, speak on the second half of this presentation about the uh, same migration to horns, but with a full 100% horns uh, tower. So uh, each of those, we have prepared a few use cases that we will uh, present so you can see, maybe it will fit to your needs. Uh, in any case, at the end of this presentation, we will have, of course, some dedicated time for uh, questions. So uh, please feel free to write to us during the presentation in case something you don't understand or you would like to clarify it even uh, further. So uh, let's commence with the presentation. Uh, as you can see, well, already <laughs> Mr. Lewis uh, introduced uh, me. My name is uh, Jorge Fernandez. I'm the product manager at RF Elements. And uh, let's commence with the first uh, slide of uh, today's presentation. Just one more thing. This webinar is uh, being recorded and also live streamed on our uh, RF Elements uh, page on Facebook and uh, on the RF, RF Elements Asia group as well. Uh, but after we finish this presentation, we will uh, edit the, the webinar and we will upload the final uh, presentation and recording to our YouTube channel, which of course we will share on our different platforms. So without further ado, let's commence. So why we uh, will consider on the first glance, like why we will consider uh, migrating to horns, right? Well, uh, of course, there are several, let's say, symptoms that your WISP network is already experiencing or is, you know, indicating that uh, commencing a migration would be a good idea. You're seeing here uh, strong interference, uh, which brings, of course, unstable network throughput, uh, which also uh, comes to jumping modulation rates, erratic latency issues as well, you're seeing on your screen right now, or perhaps too many customer complaints. So all of these, uh, when they come together, uh, might result into more uh, subtle results, like, for example, your inability to uh, grow uh, your WISP as a business. So um, your underperforming uh, network simply will uh, keep, uh, keep yourself so busy all the time that you don't have even uh, additional time to think on how to grow your WISP. So seeing all of these issues, uh, you might be interested to try uh, our horn sectors. We will explain a little bit in the upcoming slides. Uh, <clears throat> our horn sectors, they uh, address the root cause of the problems in the unlicensed 5 GHz band, which uh, is interference, inter interference, sorry. Uh, so uh, because the horn sectors does not have any side lobes. So, uh, since the horns do not uh, collect the noise uh, in the first place, and this uh, trickles down to majority of the problems uh, mentioned on this uh, slide. So, uh, which are the most, say, typical problems, right, when we are migrating to horns? Uh, perhaps you're sick of, um, and tired of all the interference issues and uh, you're ready uh, or you're ready to give the horns a chance, uh, well, there, there can be several issues that you might run into as you want to migrate to horns, right? So there is basically, as you see, no general instruction on where to start, uh, or maybe the execution path is not, uh, let's say, uh, clearly defined. Uh, perhaps the initial test you do is results, you know, they don't give you a, a good picture of what you're expecting. Or uh, perhaps you might be confused of the horn technology, let's say this way, uh, to begin with. And all of this is absolutely fine. Uh, whichever is your case, uh, this webinar will uh, address all of these uh, points. So, as I said at the beginning, we're going to start with uh, two 
uh, or we're going to basically expand these topics, two major topics. We're going to speak about how to uh, increase the coverage, which means, of course, the combination of uh, the um, um, traditional sectors plus horns. And then on the second part of this presentation, we will see how to deploy a uh, network with 100% horns on your towers. So before we jump, it's good uh, to know beforehand some details. There are several things that we should keep uh, in mind and understand uh, before starting the migration itself. So our horns are <clears throat> in the market since uh, 2014. So these, uh, these years already have created a very solid research online base. Uh, so you have plenty of experiences <clears throat> that you might, let's say, consider um, looking into before you start. Um, we have, of course, um, or we encourage the people to um, like find uh, the solution uh, to the problem they actually have. So uh, not to uh, deploy, for example, a bigger degree uh, antenna higher uh, being with in horizontal when you might need perhaps something more uh, you know, uh, less less wide. So focus on the problem you basically need uh, to solve, what you really are facing. Understand the spectral limits. We understand, of course, that <clears throat> the spectrum is uh, a limited resource, so we need to start to think how to use it more properly. Uh, and then four is the fourth point is this slide that let's use it in a way uh, more smart, more wise, the spectrum, because again, it's, it's a limited uh, resource, resource, uh, resource. So eventually, of course, we need to understand the limits of the hardware we are using as well. Uh, so we need to keep our uh, expectations realistic. So now we're going to present a series of, uh, let's say, use cases where uh, horns will uh, be the right choice to deploy. So let's see this example on your screen right now. We're seeing, for example, uh, four uh, sectors. Let's say the se these sectors are, uh, for example, uh, 90 degrees uh, uh, patch array antennas. So we are covering 360. We can see, of course, on the edge of uh, the sectors that the uh, coverage is not really the best. You can see that there are some pin uh, on the maps that are red. Some of them are yellow, which means the connection is in a regular state. So therefore you need to improve this kind of connectivity to these clients. So, well, what can we do? Okay, we can do an upgrade. So we pick one of the sectors that we already have deployed. We change that sector for horns, we see the performance, we see how they uh, actually bring the results to, or, or let's say positive results to your network. So we see that the clients that we are being served by the horns are now having a very good signal, which means that the CPs are, um, you know, properly modulating because the antennas of the access points, they can uh, provide a better uh, SNR and a better noise rejection. So uh, this way, for example, you can pick one sector, deploy horns. This is a way to um, basically do not commit to a major investment at the very beginning, but we can test the water, let's say this way, uh, first no, with uh, a minimum risk level. Another uh, important uh, aspect that we can have is, uh, you know, because the horns are different from the traditional patch array sectors, we need to know where our clients are. So let's check this example on the screen uh, you're seeing now. We have clients that are connected on the back lobe of the traditional patch array sectors uh, because these antennas, they have this enormous back lobe, and yes, you can connect the CPEs, which of course will result in a very poor connection. So the point here is we need to know where our clients are because when we switch from these antennas, this patch array to the horns, since, since the horns, they project the signal on the front of the antenna and not on the back, these clients that were connecting on the back lobe of your old patch array sectors right now when you migrate to horns they will not have a connection so you might need to place a second antenna to serve these 
customers. So this is uh, just an example. We chose to use a 90 degree uh, symmetrical horn on the right side of the picture. We also, of course, uh, one of the points we spoke uh, on the previous slides is that we need to have uh, realistic expectations, right? So we need to understand the hardware we are using. Uh, the horns, yes, they solve the problem of noise and noise and self uh, interference through the lack of side lobes. Uh, once the issue of the noise is basically solved, then uh, we need to be aware that the rest of the hardware in that equation has also limitations as well. So we can only expect results within those limitations, right? So in other words, the maximum and let's say aggregate throughput you can achieve is basically limited by what the radios can handle uh, all the the horns what we will basically do is they will get uh, like the best they will push the radio to the limit in order to deliver the maximum throughput possible but again the chipset or the radio itself has limitations Another uh, very important thing is, uh, let's you know, we encourage people to use the antenna with the right gain. So, the options of uh, the gain selection, let's say that these patch array antennas, the traditional patch array antennas, they bring to us, it's uh, very limited. So this leads no to user users basically uh, developing the habit of using a very wide antenna <laughs> or too much gain in situations that they don't need to. So uh, you're seeing, for example, left of uh, in this picture, the left part, uh, we're seeing we're using, of course, a traditional patch array antenna. We can see that all the red part is area in which we don't have customers and we are just uh, you know, giving too much signal, too much gain, too much aperture in the in the horizontal being uh, being with, and you can see how it's already covering areas that we don't need. So this is also creating problems because it's basically capturing noise from far away uh, 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 solutions, right? So we can see the difference. So with one antenna on the left, we provide signal to places we don't need with the antenna on the right we see that it's a very well defined shape you are projecting on the terrain itself so you're all always covering what you need that's that's the important thing uh, and it's one of the of course uh, bullet points we mentioned at the beginning let's use the right antenna for the job which means let's select the antenna we actually need based on the necessities or the needs of the uh, our CPEs in the terrain. So let's not use a high gain antenna to cover a few CPEs and uh, basically project signal far away. Let's use a horn antenna, let's focus the signal where we want and let's achieve a better throughput and better SNR. Another also a thing to keep in mind is the down tilt. So uh, with um, the sectors, traditional sectors, the down tilt is very uh, limited what you can do. Uh, and we can see again that we are projecting signal far away from the tower, which we don't need. Now you can check the horns on the right side. So that this is one of the beauties of the antennas, of the horn antennas. You can tilt the antenna to basically just give coverage or give service to the people you actually need. So you can see we are replacing, for example, let's say on the left we have a patch arrays of 90 degrees and on the right <coughs> we have um, three antennas, uh, horn 30 degrees, and you see how we are adjusting the tilt depending on the distribution of our clients on the terrain. So this is another important thing to keep into consideration. The antennas, the horn antennas with the down tilt will help you to optimize the coverage you are already uh, basically projecting into that terrain, right? So a question can be uh, how we can, you know, know the down tilt of, of which down tilt I should use for one antenna specifically. Okay. Uh, the reply for that is uh, we have a link calculator on our website which you can play with the down tilt and see how the coverage will perform based on the input parameters. So it's easy, you just go to rfelements.com, you click on link calc and then you see basically the simulation and you can play with these parameters um, and see how it will work the down tilt in your specific scenario. So uh, you can basically uh, uh, 
for sure check this tool of us it's free to use so you can uh, plan your links and even ex uh, have beforehand an idea of the performance instead of using uh, let's say the just one antenna for a high dense sector um, let's analyze uh, this in particular scenario let's say okay we have three sectors on the left as you can see the sectors are making noise to each other in the tower in the center in the pin you can see that uh, these sectors are really crowded which means that the density of course is quite high so uh, we are going to replace these sectors and for different horn antennas in order to provide a personalized coverage you can see on the right side uh, the same basically scenario but now is served with horn antennas in this case uh, we chose uh, three symmetrical horn 60 degrees antennas and uh, four symmetrical horn 30 degrees you can see how we basically split all these patch array sectors into smaller sectors to basically give uh, a better um, <clears throat> you know better service to these uh, clients so the idea is let's use the right antenna based on the needs of the terrain because we know that CPE sometimes can be uh, scarce like uh, you know in a terrain you can have many in different positions so you can choose which antenna to use based on this uh, again you can use the link calculator to uh, try out which antenna will be the one uh, you should use based on your specific needs now with RF elements uh, you have what we call no, the, the, a, a tool set so uh, you have seven uh, antennas uh, symmetrical horns uh, three asymmetrical and one ultra horn which of course complements everything to give a personalized uh, coverage based on your needs now um, a balanced network is very important of course to keep the customers happy to keep the connections in a very let's say good condition so um, we're seeing here again and uh, we start with a use case we start with uh, traditional sectors you can see that basically in the center of the sector you have the best coverage but once the CPEs are located uh, in different areas of that coverage of that array sec of that of that sector sorry you can see how it the MCS start to uh, drop uh, this is a typical let's say a feature of these uh, patch array antennas that you have the best connection in the center and around the areas or in the borders the connections are dropping so uh, we can see also of course the network throughput is really not the best and therefore the CPU load it's quite high so um, what we can do well okay let's let's apply a different approach here let's put uh, a horn antenna which again provides a stable coverage well-defined radiation pattern which the coverage on the terrain will be also def uh, defined and uh, we can calculate and see what we can expect so with the antennas since the, the horn antennas you can basically guarantee the the MCS rates will be very stable across all the CPEs and this is one of the features of course of the this type of antenna with the symmetrical beam pattern as well so we can see that um, we place we replace this horn sec uh, this uh, patch array sector with a horn antenna we can see now that the CPU uh, load is lower and that the network throughput is higher so of course this is something very positive and it brings us even the possibility of uh, increasing the amount of speed that we actually provide to the customers so let's understand a little bit you know what is the symmetrical beam of uh, one antenna right our customers are sometimes confused with these symmetrical beams uh, patterns no? of the horns um, you can see a difference so in the uh, patch array antennas the vertical uh, or the elevation plane uh, being with is very narrow so it's typically a few degrees as we can see on the symmetrical horn antennas that uh, it's uh, basically more wide I mean symmetrical means of course the, the same aperture either on horizontal or vertical planes so this of course has a number of uh, benefits for the deployment of, of horns into several types of landscapes for example um, if even if it is a high customer scenario uh, density scenario no or deep ballets of course they work really well because of the shape of the radiation uh, pattern you can see clearly the difference patch array has a very wide 
of aperture in the horizontal plane, very narrow aperture in the elevation plane, you can see how the symmetrical horn is uh, basically projected, right? So H, uh, horizontal and vertical is exactly the same, aperture in degrees. Now the asymmetrical is a combination, right? So uh, it's like we get the symmetrical horn and we squeeze it from the top, so we find the asymmetrical horn. We can see that the asymmetrical horn, they have a narrower uh, beam uh, width in the elevation plane, which of course is very good for deployment, for example, rural deployments where the clients are far away from the tower, but far away in between them as well. So the shape of the radiation pattern of these asymmetrical horns is very good for this kind of rural deployment CPs that are far away from the tower. And uh, of course, with distance between them also quite high. So uh, we can see how it looks. Uh, this is the asymmetrical horns with um, uh, beam switch, the 30 degrees. Now we're seeing the 60 degrees, a 60 in horizontal and 25 in uh, vertical and we can see now the asymmetrical 90 is 90 horizontal and 25 uh, on vertical. Now, um, how can we go or how we can do this increasing the coverage on our uh, existing network? Let's take a look. Now, there are several, let's say, approaches that we could apply to this. Um, of course, uh, maybe some people would like to start, for example, testing the horn antennas to see uh, how they perform by offloading uh, these uh, access points where are, which are really crowded, or perhaps extending the capacity of this uh, tower. So, once you uh, have decided like which antenna uh, or you want to use uh, of our filaments, well, it's smart to consider, of course. Uh, also, uh, which are the, the necessary one for the thing you need to complete. Like, again, we go back and we make emphasis in choosing the right antenna for the job. So, not more beam width that we need, focus the radiation pattern where we want to provide the best uh, conditions for a proper link to the CPEs. So, uh, now you know that uh, you have in your hands uh, the tool set of horns. So, you have 10 different tools to choose from. Uh, for example, smaller horns uh, for close clients, uh, larger horns, let's say, in, the, in, in, in gain. Uh, for uh, like higher capacity, densi uh, higher density deployments, or perhaps even uh, distance. So, um, if you also want to have the option of providing more speed to your customers, uh, like higher packages uh, for premium customers, well, there is no problem with this. The horns will enable you to increase this um, uh, speed of the customers as well, right? So. There are several of, of let's say, um, bullet points in these slides that we will expand each one of them to explain how you can achieve uh, the completion, basically, of each one of these. So let's start with the first one. Uh, what is when we speak about, you know, offloading or adding capacity? So let's say we have four sectors, uh, say randomly 90 degree sectors. You see that there are two sectors which are really crowded. So the throughput is really not the best because the traditional sectors are really incapable of providing these speeds you sell to your customers because of the side lobes and all the noise issues. So let's apply one horn to each of those overcrowded sectors so we can offload CPs from the main sector antennas to the, sec to the horn antennas. It, therefore, we split somehow the uh, CPs and you can see now that uh, the performance is way better. We can use uh, the, the smaller wider horns for close uh, clients. Let's look at this typical scenario. We have a sector, we have a bunch of customers at the very close to the tower and uh, they are really suffering because of the poor connectivity, right, with the sectors. Okay, well, let's leave this sector already in place and let's, let's add a horn sector in this case, we choose 90 degrees, uh, one symmetrical, and you can see that now you are releasing these customers from the main access point, but you're also giving, it, giving them a better coverage because you're having a horn tilted for their specific deployment right on the terrain. 
the same goes basically with the other, with the you know uh, larger or or narrower in in being with horns for high density scenarios. Again, we have a sector. One portion of this sector is crowded, so we are going to basically provide uh, a service. We will put a horn antenna dedicated for those customers, and we are going again to offload them from the main access point and also give them. Uh, a service that is better in quality and even uh, in speeds as well depends on what we want to provide how to achieve the higher throughput packages with horns well uh, again we start from the scratch that we have a sector but in that sector we have let's say four clients and these four, four clients are let's say businesses so for the nature of what they do they will need increased uh, bandwidth because they require so right so what we're going to do is we're going to separate these customers who require very high bandwidth uh, or speeds uh, from the main access point and we will all assign a horn to provide them the coverage they need therefore uh, we're going of course to provide the or be able to supply the needs for speed they they, they have at this point how to improve the edges or the borders, let's say this way, of the uh, typical uh, patch array sectors. Well, you're seeing here your screen, there are CPEs in red that are in the borders of two sectors, therefore, of course, their connectivity is very bad, they have poor signal, lower SNR. So, what we're going to do in this case is, okay, let's put a horn in between those two sectors, and we're going to give a proper service to all of those clients and therefore also releasing them from the main access point improving of course the main access point improving them since they were really in a bad shape of connectivity and you can see that basically it's a win-win <laughs> uh, scenario right so the sectors are uh, not the end game let's say this way uh, because uh, this will require more channels so on the left side you will need basically five channels like you have four sectors four channels and then one channel for all the four horns now if we replace everything for horns you can see that we will only need two frequencies so we will be saving three frequencies therefore we will be of course also improving or helping or contributing to improve the local spectrum where we are operating in a, a, a specific area so you can see that with horns this is uh, completely uh, able to be done. The second part of the webinar, as I mentioned at the beginning, is um, let's talk about how to build a, a brand new tower with 100% horns. So there are different uh, ideas, different approaches. You can start with a combination of symmetrical and asymmetrical, depending on the, let's say, the, the CPs where they are located or the terrain, the ground. If it is a valley, if it is a rural area, suburban or urban, you will choose. So you can start playing with our tool set, of course, to uh, give a proper coverage. You can see one of the examples is uniform coverage, custom coverage based on the uh, customer layout. And the last one is basically add or swap horns as needed. So let's see a little bit of each one of these. Now. The uniform coverage, I think that the term itself is already very clear. So we will start basically covering 360 degrees with pure horns. You can see we started, for example, with uh, six horns of 60 degrees, but then the density just went up because we were able to provide a quality service to those end customers. So now six is not enough. We need to put so replace those 660 for 12. 30s so density grew business grew income of course therefore grew as well we were able to provide a good connectivity customers are happy density is growing so it's good for business therefore we need to increase the density there so you can use uh, narrower uh, being with horns the custom well is basically provide coverage where uh, personalized coverage depending on the cps in the terrain so this is a very um, let's say generic example uh, we can combine as it says here various uh, degrees of horns depending on the coverage we want to do of course depending on how the CPs are located in uh, the terrain another and the last point is um, how to add and change horns needed so we start 
four horns, nine tigeris, let's say this way. But one of the sectors got so well, the clients were so happy, you started to increase the amount of uh, clients, density grew. So we started to replace those 90s for 30s. So you can see how we can play. So the tool set brings you this opportunity to play with uh, the coverage. You can swap, you can add here, you can get a 60 degree sector and put 230, so you can get a 90 degree sector and put 140, 150 degree horn. You can play. You have the availability, the, basically the possibility of playing, which with the traditional sectors is not possible. Like density with horns is super achievable. You can get it. You can get high amount of CPs and you can get all of them served properly by using the uh, horn antennas. So I guess maybe you are wondering now. <laughs> Uh, how densely I can install the horns for well, I guess this picture in, in the screen is uh, already uh, saying to you like many horns all of them working perfectly uh, coexisting together many sectors uh, with excellent and stable performance right so this uh, with horns is a daily reality and keep into consideration that this is our customers pictures not ours so uh, what a few advices we have for you before we wrap up this presentation. So use the correct gain uh, of the horn for the required coverage. So select the right antenna for the job. Know where your customers are before deploying, very important. Use the down tilt if you need it to achieve uh, different goals. The hybrid antenna solution is not the best approach and very important plan before you deploy. Uh, successful planning can bring, of course, uh, successful deployment. So it's very important that we sit before we use all the tools, we use the data sheets, we analyze what we have, what we want, we make a strategy, a roadmap, and then we start basically deploying. So it's very important to plan ahead. Where to buy our products? We have a store locator and a web page that you can check which product you want and region, and we'll definitely tell you which, which distributor is available with this product. How far antennas go? Uh, we already mentioned this before. Link calculator on our website. You can click on it and you can start simulating your links. How to become a distributor? Uh, there is a link at the very end of our web page. You can see it here on the image. You tap uh, on become a distributor. You fill all the information that is there and we will contact you. We have uh, communities um, on Facebook, RF Elements English, RF Elements Asia in this group as well, which we're sharing this live stream right now. And we have, of course, a forum RF Lab where you can also register. It's, it's free, completely free for use, and you can uh, basically uh, communicate with us through there as well. We have a playlist on our YouTube channel named Wisp Traveler in which you can see how other people have been migrating their towers to our filaments horns and how it has been the results. So it's, it's also another way for you, another source of information for you to consult. We have, of course, um, also uh, the educational videos of the Inside Wireless. This is a very short videos, two, three minutes with a lot of information presented to you in a way, in a very uh, dynamic way that you can easily understand, uh, has various topics of RF elements, of, oh, sorry, RF engineering. So if you are, um, if you want to know a little bit more about these important parameters and explanation, we invite you to go to YouTube, search for the Inside Wireless playlist on our channel, RF elements, and you can, of course, uh, see them. All right, well, uh, on my end, uh, this is uh, all I have for you guys today. Uh, I want to thank you, all the attendees on our social media and on here on GoToWebinar, and also, Luis, thank you so much for being with us. The recording will be published uh, in the coming days, and we will, of course, uh, everything will be posted on, uh, on our social media. So uh, on my end, this is uh, everything. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great day.